Hello, and welcome to the CTO Perspective, where we discuss unique perspectives about the most current issues in IT operations. And here today to speak with us is once again, Alec Eisenberg, Chief Technology Officer and Co-Founder at Big Panda. Hey, Alec. Hey, Aaron. Great to be here, as always. Always great talking to you. Today, we'll be talking about a unique angle uh, or a unique way of looking at AI ops, mainly trying to understand what AI ops is. Um, so Gardner coined the term AI ops a few years ago in very general terms. Basically, what it means today is implementing AI and ML into IT operations. But without actually going into specifics on how exactly to do that, um, AI ops has become a big and important buzzword. It's driving a lot of business decisions. So what's currently happening is that most uh, IT ops vendors are AI ops, right? Or their uh, platforms are AI ops driven. Uh, and even though these vendors do completely different things uh, and look at AI ops in completely different ways, they're all AI ops. And that causes a bit of confusion, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think, um, you know, the, the premise of AI in IT operations is uh, fantastic, right? AI can accomplish a lot of things around automation, around insight, around data processing. Uh, so the attraction towards AI is, uh, is well understood. I think the, the challenge these days is that every vendor is essentially an AI ops vendor. Like everyone advertises how they do AI ops. So how can we expect uh, leaders to make decisions around what should be their next step in terms of AI ops strategy when seemingly all ways lead to AI ops anyway, right? So for example, what? what who's, who say they're AI ops and how different it is? Can you give a few examples? Absolutely. So, uh, you know, let's look at the log management and log an an analysis tools, right? You have a, a system that essentially aggregates all your log data from different systems, um, provides a very good index and some dashboard where you can easily search and visualize your log data. That has been around for at least, what, 10 years, maybe even 15 years. Terrific. Now they have this AI ops capability that automatically parses log data, right? Automatically detects the different patterns in the logs and parses it into something that uh, can be uh, read by humans more easily. Uh, if you think about the APM category, like the application uh, performance monitoring tools, um, created instrumenting your different applications, be them, you know, if it's Java or uh, .NET or, or anything else, they'll tell you how long your transactions run. They'll tell you about the error rates and stuff like that. That's awesome. Now they have an AI ops capability on top of that that tells you when you have anomalies. So when you have too many transaction errors or too long latency compared to this time of day. So as you can see, every different category in our space has a flavor of AI ops that's very different and very specific to their uh, part of the stack. So is there a definitive answer of what AI ops is? is you know, or are there several types of AI ops? What's the right way to be looking at it? So you know, in my conversations with customers, um, I got to a point where uh, I kind of feel that the best way to think about AI ops is actually uh, categorize any AI ops solution into one of three categories, right? You say either they're all related to uh, uh, collecting data, so the data generators, let's call them. Then there's the data analyzers, the ones that turn data into insight, turn data into action. And finally, there's the collaboration layer. This is where humans and teams interact one with the other on top of those insights and actions. Um, that are being generated. So these are essentially the three categories of AI ops. So, so three categories, three layers of different apps. Maybe we discuss each layer to try to understand what tools we're discussing when we talk about that layer and what AI ops mean for them. So um, the first layer you mentioned was those that generate data. So those are probably the monitoring and observability tools. Yeah, spot on. So essentially uh, any log management tool, any infrastructure monitoring tool, any application monitoring tool, all of these, what they do really well is they instrument your infrastructure, they instrument your applications, and they collect data very effectively, and they centralize it in one place, and they visualize it. Right? These are the data collectors, data generators. Normally, you would buy another, a, a, another data generator when you need more data, right? when you need to generate more data, where you feel you have some gaps in visibility around a specific part of your infrastructure or application stack. And, and what is AI ops for them? When you talk about AI ops in this layer of mon observability and monitoring, what does AI ops mean? So they mostly focus, because they have all the raw data that they collect, mostly where they focus their energies around um, being able to identify anomalies in the data. So if some, some kind of metric goes up and down in a way that's different than what is normally the case for that time of day or time of year, uh, they will essentially trigger an event or a warning saying, hey, here's an anomaly. That's one flavor. The other flavor I've seen, especially around log management, 
is uh, kind of automatic process processing of uh, log data, being able to say all oh, these log lines look the same, or uh, here's an exception, or here's a specific host name in the data. These are essentially the types of AI ops uh, for the data generators. So when you talk to these vendors, for them, AI ops is implementing AI and ML into trying to make sense of this, a little bit about the data, trying to find uh, anomalies, trying to find similarities within the data that they're collecting. Yeah, in many ways, I would say they actually find ways to generate even more data on top of what they already <laughs> generate. Okay. All right, we'll get back to that in a second. And so, and the second layer was, you said those that convert data into insight and action. So what... What would that be? What tools are we talking about here? And what does that AI ops mean for them? So this is this layer essentially uh, thinks about the problem of, all right, you have all these data generators, you have a ton of data, but unless you can turn the data into something actionable, so either a real insight, some deep insight, or an actual action, um, it doesn't make sense to generate all this data. So this is a category of vendors. And by the way, Big Panda, uh, you know, we're, we're an event correlation and automation layer. This is essentially the layer in which we, we sit. And, um, uh, and, and what we do, we, again, we, take, we consume data from all the different uh, uh, data generators. Be it, if you have 10 generators or 15 genera data generators, and we aggregate that, we normalize that, we correlate that, we produce some root cause insights on top of that. And finally, we actually automate the response to incidents that are generated from that data. Okay, so, you're, so this layer um, uses AI and ML and AI ops to, uh, I would say, you know, taking it from your words to lower the noise and try to get insight into what, all this data. What is it actually wrong? What's the root cause and how to what, maybe automate part of its resolution? Yeah, I would say data to either, you know, either a very meaningful piece of insight that drives decision right. or an actual action that actually resolves an incident. Right. And then there's a third layer, I guess, which uses that insight or uses those actions. And that's what you call the layer that facilitates teamwork. Exactly. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, all the vendors there, you, you have like chat tools, you have on-call rotation tools, you have ticketing tools, ITSM kind of tools. Um, they're very good at essentially facilitating, like you say, teamwork or the interaction between human beings. Um, and where they, the area where they normally use AI is more around, you know, if somebody enters data into the system, I'm a human being, I'm a, I'm a team member, I enter data into the system, you need to parse that using natural language processing to make it more structured. Um, that's essentially the main focus of these kinds of vendors when it comes to AI. Right. So it seems that you actually need all three layers, right? If you're looking at the incident management lifecycle from the moment that data is generated to actually being actioned upon and, and, and collaborated on, um, you need all three. So if, if we sort of made sense and made some order and created a framework for AI ops, and let's say we accept that AI framework, how does that help us to better adopt AI ops? How do we know which tools we need as a company? Yeah, great question. So I, I will start with this. I feel like a lot of companies, they have a little bit of a, the, wag the, t a wag the dog situation where, you know, they, instead of starting with the main problem and thinking about how they can solve that problem, they, a little bit, they start with the solution. What happens is I have a vendor already in place and maybe that vendor does ITSM, maybe that vendor does uh, uh, event correlation, maybe that vendor does some kind of log management. Now that vendor kind of says, hey, we also have these AI ops capabilities. Why don't you do whatever we do? Um, and what happens now, you're driving your entire AI ops uh, strategy based on what the vendor provides rather than your needs. So what I encourage all the, our customers and people I talk to in the industry is always start with this framework. Like you have these three layers, try to understand where you're strong, where you're weak, where you have the biggest gap. Once you have that kind of analysis, you can understand where you want to start your journey towards AI ops and where can AI ops move the needle the most for you. Um, only then, after you have identified the area you want to improve, then you can look into vendors and see who's the best vendor to solve that problem for you. Okay, so take a step backwards from the tools that you're using. Don't let the tools drive the AI ops strategy, right? Not, don't say, because I'm using this, let's see what, what these can do for me to AI ops. First, understand. What AI ops is by taking a step backward, looking at your three layers, your observability and monitoring, event correlation, automation, and collaboration, and looking at, I would say, maybe trying to understand how mature you are in each of these layers, and then what, trying to keep it like the same level of maturity across all three, because you need all of them? I think the best way to answer this, I'll give you a couple of examples, right? Like I, I spoke to a customer who said, you know what, we have 
good log management, very mature in place, gives us good visibility around all the lo log data our applications and services are generating. We have very good infrastructure monitoring. We've invested a good five years in improving our infra monitoring. But you know, we have some gaps in visibility around application performance, right? And and how can I solve that the best? And, and my answer would be, you know, get an application performance monitoring tool and leverage the fact they have AI ops in there to generate good anomaly data on top of that. That's the best thing you can do right now. But if the question, if what, what I see in many occasions when I talk to customers, they say, you know, we have all this visibility. We've invested in like 15 different monitoring tools. We get all this data. The challenge right now ahead of us is how do we take all this beautiful data that is being generated? We have this really beautiful data, but how do we take that beautiful data and turn that into something that's actionable? If that's your problem, then obviously you should be investing in the middle layer around event correlation automation. One last example, you know, we actually have terrific observability, good visibility across the stack. You actually have very good, you know, event data to insight, data to action tier that kind of solves that problem. But maybe what you have is a lot of team members that kind of enter data that's not very accurate, not very up-to-date. You want to make sure that your data is being massaged, massaged automatically and improved. That's where you would essentially look into AI ops module, modules that you have in collaboration tools. Um, so that's how I would approach it. For, first, evaluate the maturity of each layer, and then think about the best vendors or solutions in that specific layer uh, where you have the gaps and how you can solve that. So first, yeah, so first accept the fact that there are three layers, that you need to be strong on all of them. Try to understand the maturity in each of them and then find the best vendor uh, for where you want to develop the most. Exactly. So, uh, um, and I think that, that starts to pose uh, some more challenges is maybe when you try to understand how mature you are, how do you do that, right? What are the, how do you go into use cases? And I, I'm, I'm assuming that's, one of the biggest challenges customers have when, when they go on, when they set out on their AI ops journey, right? 100%. I think, uh, you know, I, I think there is a very important foundational step of embracing this uh, framework that we just discussed here and thinking about things uh, the right way around your AI ops strategy instead of kind of this, again, the tail wagging the dog, have the dog wag the tail. But that being said, the next step, which is very, where really the rubber hits the road, is how do you um, kind of, uh, figure out the different use cases you have and understand how to solve each one of them uh, individually. And I think that that opens up some great uh, uh, topics for conversation for next time. So I think uh, we'll end it at that. I want to thank you so much for talking to me today. This was great, Joram. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you want to hear more CTO perspectives or learn more about AI ops or about the Big Panda platform, please visit us at bigpanda.io. See you next time.